Victor Bundipe, good morning. Adebayo, good morning. Uh, Adida Mola, welcome back. Ayodeji, good morning. Kike, good morning. Shegun Fatimo, welcome this morning. Rosemary Kingsley, good morning. Olukayo uh, de, good morning. Oreo Fair, good morning. Chris, good morning. Chris Bradley. Ola Martin, Nikki Okoro, Beate, uh, Brenda, Anu, uh, Bosse, Kenneth. Good morning, everyone. Faith, good morning. David Obedera, good morning. Temitope, good morning. John, good morning. Ogunshola, good morning. Annie Atama, good morning. Pastor Sufficient. Stephanie Lee. Uh, Nde, good morning. Well, I would like to ask all of you to go share the link if you don't mind. Let's begin to share the link. So look for your share button. Oh, Itodo Isaac. <laughs> wow, that's a surprise. It's good you are able to, to watch today. Well, let's go look for the share button and let's share the but the the, the link uh, as we are about to commence today. Let's the, today's today's word is very important, and if you are here today, I really think that you need to listen to today's message. Today's message will really open your eyes a great deal. That's what I think. I think you know you need to share the message and you need to sit down. And avoid all kind of distractions because today's message is going to open your eyes big time. It's going to open your eyes big time. I'm warning you. So come on, you know, get ready, get yourself steady, and I will be ready to go. All right, you know, I'm, I keep I'm, I keep on talking. I'm continuing to talk on the subject of the kingdom, and today the the the, the title of today's message is. The kingdom of God versus the kingdom of salvation, or the kingdom of, I mean, sorry, the gospel of salvation versus the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of salvation versus the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of salvation versus the gospel of the kingdom. So that is the major thing we are going to address today. The gospel of salvation verse as against the gospel of the kingdom that is uh there is a difference there and that is what i would like us to examine today most of the time the gospel that we hear people preach about in our churches is could be best described as the gospel of salvation uh, it's the gospel of salvation. For those people who did not listen to the message yesterday, you know, I would like to not just ask you to go listen, but I would like to beg you to go listen. Please do anything you can to go listen to the two messages of tomorrow of yesterday, both the morning message and the uh, evening message. You need to do all your best to make sure you listen to those messages. Please, you don't miss it for anything. Don't miss it for anything. Go look for those messages of yesterday. And yesterday I was preaching on uh, understanding the gospel of the kingdom. But so you need, please go look for them. And you, if you don't find, you go and find, they're there on my Facebook here, on the video section. And they are going to be there on the face, uh, YouTube as well, YouTube and, and, uh, and on my blog. So, uh, but today we are talking about the gospel of, uh, how did I even call it? Let me see which one I put first here. The gospel of the kingdom versus the gospel of salvation. Yeah, that's the way. The gospel of the kingdom versus, as it is, the gospel of the kingdom. Of the, kingdom. the gospel of the kingdom versus the gospel of salvation. 
Now, the gospel that we see people teach on or preach about mo most of the time in our churches today, let me see, yeah. The gospel that people preach about most of the time today, unfortunately, is the gospel of salvation. That is the way I term it. I term the gospel that is preached in our churches today to the gospel of salvation, whereas the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ asked us to preach is the gospel of the kingdom. So you must know the difference. What is the difference between the gospel that is being preached that we hear all, of, all over us, all around us, and the gospel of the kingdom? But first of all, let me again assure you that the gospel that we were asked to go and preach is the gospel of the kingdom. Luke chapter 9. If you look at the gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 2. The gospel according to the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 2. Uh, Luke 9, 2 says, actually, maybe we could start from verse 1. Luke 9, 1. You remember that story when Jesus gathered his disciples. He said, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. Friends will be given power. Gave them power and authority over all demons. <laughs> if the Bible is saying that God has given us power and authority over all demons, who is there talking about demons in the churches? Who is there casting out demons, you know, from morning to night? Who is there talking about demons all the time? Who is there doing deliverance for Christians? Christians have been given, every Christian has been given power, authority over demons and to cure diseases. Then verse 2 talks about the message that we are supposed to go with. Now, verse 2 says, Okay, I'm sorry. Let me quickly answer this young man. Damilare Ola Rewaju is saying, When is your branch coming to Ogun State, Nigeria? I don't even have any branch in Nigeria in the first place, just for you to know. So Ogun State, Nigeria, for you, for your information, that is my state. That's where I come from. So I'm particular about Ogun State, Nigeria. And uh, I wanted to, I want, I, but I'm not talking about... <laughs> It's not my branch that is coming to Ogun State, Nigeria. That was his name again. Damilare. Yeah, Damilare. Uh, it's not my church. It's not just my church that is coming to Ogun State, Nigeria. And I'm not even thinking about church or branch. Uh, it's not my concern right now. My concern is that I will transform Nigeria. I want Nigeria to be transformed. I want to work and give my best and my expertise and my experience over the years to bring it back to my home country and see my country regenerated and transformed for the Lord Jesus Christ. And for that to happen, I, uh, I, I must, that, that is the instruction I got from the Lord, I need to come to Nigeria myself. I need to move to Nigeria. So it's not my branch that is coming to Nigeria. I am the one coming to Nigeria. I am moving to Nigeria all by myself. I'm not alone, but I'm coming with a team of 2,000 people coming with me to Nigeria. We, you know, we are serious about this business. We are going to get Nigeria changed. I don't care what politicians are doing. Let them do their own thing. But you believe me. You look at me very well and believe what I'm about to tell you. That country is going to experience transformation. Nigeria is going to become the pride of Nigerians and Africans. Nigeria is going to rise on our knees, from our knees. Nigeria is going to experience what the gospel really means. We are going to apply the principles and the power of the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is going to transfer that, transform that country. Oppression is going to stop. Stopping from, I mean, starting from the oppression from churches. And the wrong doctrine is going to be corrected in the name of Jesus. And Nigerians will be excited. Things, we are going to build our country ourselves. We are not going to wait for politicians to do it for us. No. <laughs> You wait. You you know, I I, I've been talking too much about this. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I want, by the grace of God, to be able to go back. If you want to pray for me, pray that, you know, God will let me go, for, uh, leave Ukraine on time, and he will remove all obstacles and make me be able to go on time. I'm going to go back to Nigeria, and when I go back, then I don't need to talk. We just need, I just need to do what I know. 
I just need to put into practice what the Lord has taught me over the years. And, uh, and uh, we'll see the results. So Nigeria is about to experience a transformation because it's not just because God is coming there. God is already there, but I am coming. I am his servant. I am coming. And God has prepared me for 30 years. He had not wasted his resources. <laughs> Some people say, is that not pride to say that you are coming and Nigeria will change? Well, I don't care. Call it anything you want to call it. I don't, I don't care about that. But I am the one coming. And I know what God is going to do when I come. I'm going to come and that country is going to begin to experience something that had never been experienced before. You know, you know, do anything you want about that information. But if, if you are wise, get ready, get ready. And one of the ways for you to get ready, go find all my messages, my books, anything you can find. Get a hold of them and begin to change your mindset. Because if you don't change your mindset, you'll never be able to work with me. You'll never be able to understand what I'm saying. And you might be left out. So, you know, if you have internet, and you do because you are here now, so go to sundayadelajablog.com, sundayadelajablog.com, download as many messages as you can, and listen to as many of them as you can, as many times, as, as often as you, as you can. Then you begin to believe again that this is possible. You will actually believe to, begin to see what I'm saying. But I've done it before. You know, it's not that I'm depending on myself or on my strength. I'm depending on the God that I know. And I'm depending on the truth that I know. I'm depending on the word that I know. On the principle of the God that I know. So, you know, <laughs> uh, listen closely. By the time we begin, you will think that we never had church in Nigeria before. For me, it will be as if we are starting afresh. But God has done a great work with those people who are in Nigeria, with the Nigerian churches. They have done a great work preaching the gospel of salvation. And, you know, but on that level, they have done a good job. But to transform Nigeria, to get the country saved, to get the country redeemed, we must go beyond the gospel of salvation to begin to preach the gospel of the kingdom. It is only the gospel of the kingdom that gets nations developed. It is only the gospel of the kingdom that gets nations you know, nations grow economically and all that. It is only the gospel of salvation that brings about uh, no, no civilization. So that gospel of salvation is what we are going to bring. <laughs> Somebody say, uh, uh, William Bright is saying, please also include Portacot. Actually, Portacot is where that is, that is, it is Portacot that is spearheading this move right now. I don't know if so, there is someone there from Portacot. Maybe, I think there should be Oluka Yode there or Deepere. Please, Kayo De or, or Deepere, any one of you is there. Put your telephone there so that anyone that wants to get you people in Portacot. I have a team in Portacot already waiting for me. I don't have a team anywhere in Nigeria. I don't have a team in, Niger in, my, in my state, Ogun State. I don't have a team in Lagos. I don't have a team in Abuja. I don't have a team waiting for me anywhere. But I have a team waiting for me in Portacot. No, no, I have a team also in Akure, I'm sorry. In the, I have a team in Akure, I, I suppose. At least I have some people in Akure, maybe not a team. But in Portacot, we definitely have a team. And this team, they are always here every day. And they are always, uh, they, are, they are very passionate. And, you know, so if any one of them is here, they will write their telephone numbers for you so that you, if you are from Portacot, you could, you could get that together with them. And, you know, the, the work is beginning. Ah, you see, it is here. Uh, Oluka Yode is saying, we are praying for you, sir. We believe in your calling and your mission in Nigeria. All demons must give way for us in Jesus' name. This is the telephone, Oluka Yode's telephone. So if you are from uh, Nigeria, you could call him anywhere you are from. Uh, uh, Mercy is saying, Kaduna is waiting too. But I didn't know about that. I'm not aware. But they are in communication with me. That's what I mean. We've been talking about it and we've been in communication. So if Cardinal is, uh, is waiting, then you have to get yourself together and write me or something or, or call it, this telephone that is just being provided for you and uh, let everybody know that some people, some other cities and other states are waiting apart from, apart from, uh, apart from, uh, apart from Port Harcourt. You know, I know there are people everywhere, but, but in, in Port Harcourt, what they have done is that they have come together with a team and... Uh, that they they have actually gathered themselves together to release they downloaded all my vid all my this my messages that I'm preaching they put them in audio and and uh, they now started they are starting broadcasting them 
they start to broadcast them in the radio. So they, they are they're taking my messages and putting them in radio stations in their Port Harcourt area and South-South area and begin to broadcast them just before I come. They are getting ready for my coming for real. <laughs> and uh, they, they are getting ready. They are getting ready. They, they are broadcasting the, tele the radio and they, they, are think, they are hoping that one day the, the messages will also be broadcasted before I come all over the states. And uh, but you know, I'm just waiting, I'm getting, I'm getting ready. But when I come, you wait. So, <laughs> Ogeshuku said, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, okay, Ogeshuku said, Lagos is waiting. Like I said about Kaduna, if Lagos is waiting, you must find, I, I know individuals are waiting, but I'm not talking of individuals now. And you must find a team of people who are passionate, as passionate as yourself and who are really passionate for that change so you might want to get those kind of people uh together come together and then write me a letter or call to call to olukayo Ol and you know get together with the potako team and plan something oh by the way this is uh, another person writing from potako here cyril isaac eluma he gave his number he said they are waiting they are in potako then uh, Cyril, if you don't mind, if you could get in touch with Olukayode, his number is there already. You know, get that number and that will be fine for you. Okay, Ako Rede Femi is saying, Good morning, my pastor is Muiwa from Abuja, the man you spoke to last night, last Saturday. Oh, wow, I didn't know he's a pastor. You know, the Muiwa he spoke to, he didn't tell me he's a pastor. He must be a very, a very humble guy. Yes, I know there are people waiting for me in Abuja as well, but I didn't know he's a pastor actually. So Muiwa, yes, I know Muiwa, Femi, all right, tell him hi. And tell him also that he should tell me that they have a group. He didn't tell me he has a team or something. I was just talking to him on the, and, uh, as a person. I didn't know he's a pastor. Okay, thank you for this message. I sent you messages on your WhatsApp and I hope you reply soon. No, I don't use WhatsApp. Love you, pastor. I don't use WhatsApp or they registered somebody registered it on my name but i don't go there so if you want to send me a message send me to my email <laughs> my email is pastor at god embassy.org pastor at god embassy.org and uh yes yeah, so or you could write yeah that is the best way to get me or will i be saying your good state is waiting i don't know if your good state is waiting how will i know you need to get yourself together and let me be aware of that. William Bright is also giving his telephone number. You know, is we are not just talking about chaotic desires. Okay, Michael Joshua is from Akure, Akure, right? I've got. If you call that number to Potako, they will give you the contact of the people in Akure who are waiting as well. Oh, Bridget, Bridget Israel. Wow, this is my, wow, that's Pastor Bridget. I'm eh, from Houston. I couldn't believe it. I think I've been seeing your name here, but I couldn't just connect the two. I was thinking, is it you? Is it not? But with Israel at all, I, I think I've been seeing Bridget. I think maybe it's you. Sir, I mean, is it the same Pastor Bridget that I came to minister for in, in Houston some years back? So let me know, Bridget Israel, if you are the same Pastor Bridget, that I came to minister for a few years back in Houston. Because you are talking about Cameroon. Yes, by the way, I have a team in Cameroon. I'm going to Nigeria, but I have a team in Cameroon. Pastor Bridget, that is you. Long time. My God. Long time ago. Wow. How is everything? Nice to see you again. My God. In your home country, I have a team. I don't have a team in my own country here in Nigeria, but I have a team. <laughs> I have a team in your place. Uh, Ogeshuku is saying, can I get your phone number? No, I don't have phone number. I don't. I have phone number, but I don't carry telephone. I don't use telephone. I I use uh, video phones, but rather I would rather use Skype or things like that. So if you want to talk to me, you have to write me first. Write me first to pastor at godembassy.org. And then if you, want to, if you really want to talk to me, you will let me know what you want to talk to me about. And if I see that, you know, it's, it's a, you are serious enough or 
then I could give you my my telephone, not telephone, my Skype address or something like that. So anyway, thank you, Pastor Bridget. <laughs> oh, we need to reconnect. We need to reconnect. Blessings. Well, 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 well. If you want to move to Africa, I'm going to move you. I know you very well. We are going to move together. But there is a revolution. There is a revolution getting on the way in Africa. Well, I've, I've, I don't know if I wasted time. I wanted to say I wasted so much time already. And I've not even started my message yet. But I don't know. Maybe God is concerned about Africa. For those of you who want to move with me to Africa, by the way, I uh, go to my blog, sundayadelajablog.com, sundayadelajablog.com, and you, see, you either write slash Nigeria, or you just go in there to that blog and see Nigeria Transformation. So if you have not registered yet, and you feel that you want to follow us to go and witness the revival and the revolution that God is going to be unleashing of, upon Africa, and Nigeria in particular, if you want to be a part of it, please. Go to that blog and get yourself registered. And we're going to be sending you some uh, news, newsletters on a regular basis. So go to sundayadelajablog.com. It doesn't matter what country you are from. I have, I have Japanese going with me. I have Europeans going with me. I have Americans going, Caribbeans going. So, you know, many people are going. I'm going with a large team. So if you feel you have a burden for Africa or you just want to witness how a nation is changed and transformed by the power of God, well register and you can see all the questions and answers there you know, on that blog as well so you see all your answers all your uh, uh, questions answered well here we go the gospel of the kingdom versus the gospel of salvation the gospel of the kingdom versus the gospel of salvation sorry for you know for the distraction especially if you are not african or you are not nigerian and you wonder what is happening here well, um, <laughs> soon the whole world is going to know what is happening. I tell you that one. Soon the whole world is going to know what is happening. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Luke chapter 9 was what I was about to read. Luke chapter 9 uh, from verses 1. Uh, we're talking about the gospel of the kingdom versus the gospel of salvation. Then he called his disciples together. And give them, like I want to say again, if you did not listen to yesterday's messages in the morning and afternoon and evening, please, you know, I'm going to beg you. I'm going to, I'm going to go on my knees if you need to. Because if you don't get that message, and I saw that the shares were not too many, and the, the views were not too many, especially for yesterday, we had very low view for those messages. I think Satan is attacking people. He doesn't want them to listen to that message. But those messages of yesterday, if you don't get them, it's better for you to just know you don't get, you didn't know anything. You need to get those messages, and I'm not going to preach them again. So go and look for those messages uh, of yesterday. The morning message, you must listen to first and then continue with the evening message. They are part one and part two. And it's called Understanding the Kingdom of God. Understanding the, the, the Gospel of the Kingdom, I think. Understanding the Gospel of the Kingdom, all right? Now, so Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases now, then he goes on to say, verse 2, he sent them to preach the gospel, the, the, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, listen closely what he sent them to, what he sent them to preach. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God. That's why I don't tolerate pastors who are just, you know, exploiting the church. I don't, I cannot tolerate it. That is why I cannot tolerate the pastors who are just manipulating the church and the people of God and using their problems to manipulate them. I cannot tolerate it. That's why when people go to churches and are using, seeing people's problems and then using it to oppress them or they turn the church to money-making industry or money-making machine, I cannot tolerate it. I cannot tolerate it. I, I, my spirit is just against it. Because the thing we are supposed to go and preach, our focus is supposed to be on the kingdom of God. We are supposed to be concerned about helping people to understand the kingdom. We should be focused on helping people to understand the king. And But when everything changes and we are just doing offering, offering, and open offering, I cannot go for it. Or when we are just doing deliverance upon deliverance, 
You know, it frustrates me. I, I, you know, I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. We are supposed to be changing nations. We are supposed to be, <laughs> to be, you know, bringing the kingdom to, you know, spheres of influence to every sphere of the society. We are supposed to bring the kingdom of God to subdue nations, to change cities. That is the, that is where the meat is. That is where the real thing is. So he's saying he sent them to preach. He didn't even send them to preach the gospel. Because the gospel is the good news. But he sent them, you know, each time, like I said, each time you hear the gospel, it means it's describing something. The, the good news of what? The good news. What is the good news? The good news is the announcement, is the, the description, is the adjective, you know. So God is saying, don't go and preach the gospel of so every time you hear the good news being mentioned or the gospel being mentioned, he's referring to something. The gospel of what? Then this is what Jesus is talking about here. He sent them to preach not just the good news, because if you say the good news, if your wife if your wife is pregnant, that is good news as as well. If your your wife gives birth, that is good news too. And if you are going to use the the the, the Greek language, that is gospel. So if we, if I if I bought a new cloth, that is a gospel as well. That is good news too. If I if I built a house, that is a good news too. So it is not good news that we are just saying to preach. That is what is happening in the church, in the body of Christ today. We are just preaching any good news. Anything that sounds good. Anything that, you know, that seems good to us. is what well, you just like in the book of Judges when <laughs> everybody does what is good in their own eyes. But the, why is it, why is that happening that everybody is doing what is good in their own eyes? Why is it that everybody is just preaching anything? I mean, the names of churches is just anything that goes, anything that sounds good. Why? Because the people don't understand the real message we were sent to preach. People don't know that we were not sent to just preach the gospel, the good news. Good news of what? Everything. Good, we were sent to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The thing we are actually, the message itself is not the good news. The good news is the description, is the result, is, is the feeling we get from the, from the message. But the message itself is the kingdom of God. Go and preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God. So, but here, he even removed the word gospel. He said, he sent them, that is us. That is the commandment to us. This is the instruction to us. This is what Jesus said in, in, in his instruction to us. He said, he sent them, he sent me, he sent you, he sent the each and every one of us to preach what? What do we preach? Not just good news, not just, you know, healing, not just because when we begin to preach good news about healing, when we begin to preach good news about prosperity, when we begin to preach, preach deliverance and motivation speaking and all that, those are benefits. They are, they, are, they, they, they are good stuff, but they are just benefits of the, of the gospel. They are just benefits of the kingdom. They are just fragments of the kingdom. They are just, you know, what do you call it? You know, they are just something that, that comes, they are just particles of the kingdom. They are just something that comes along. They are not the main thing. They are not the real message. The real message is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has blessings, but it is not the blessing we are supposed to be preaching. The kingdom of God has good stuff, but it's not the good stuff we are supposed to be preaching. We are supposed to preach the message itself. The message itself is the kingdom of God. So go, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. Now, when we preach the kingdom of God, things happen. But we are not supposed to be preaching the things that happen. <laughs> it's just like saying, people come to my house here. And they see the house and they see the property or, and they go from here and they begin to talk about the house and they never talk about the man who built the house. <laughs> It's like talking about the house. Oh, that was a good house. They never talk about the person who built the house, who entertained them, who received them. Who... So the house is not a big deal. The, 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 the message is a big deal. <laughs> so, 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 you know, that makes the heart of God to be broken. That disappoints the heart of God. It's just like your, fa your, your children. When your children begin to just you know, care about what you can give to them when they care only about the money you give to them, the blessings you give to them, but they never even care about you. If mommy wants to talk to you, I don't care about money, but let, let him give me, let she, let her give me candy. When they are looking for your hands instead of your heart, 
when they are looking for your hands instead of all for your face, when they want to be with your blessing, but they don't want to be with you, when they want to hug your blessing, but they don't want to hug you, when they want to sit, or when they don't want to sit on your lap, but they want to sit on your blessing, you know, it breaks the heart of God. And that is what has been happening in the church today. And that is as a result of preaching the gospel of salvation. So the message of today is the gospel of the kingdom versus the gospel of salvation. So the gospel of salvation is when we only focus on preaching the, the you know, ben, you know uh, the salvation is the result, is one of the results of the, of the kingdom of God. But it is, I, I will even say it in different ways, not just result. Salvation is what we need to experience or what it is the process of getting the kingdom of God into us. That is the best way to say it. So it is the door. It's like in my house here, if you, I don't know if you've seen the video of my house. You could go to, to the Facebook or YouTube. You'll see the video of my house. And it, we have a gate, big gate. The gate, you know, when you come to my house, you need to ring the bell and the security will open the the gate for you. Now, the reason you need the gate, the gate to, needs to be open for you, is for you to be able to get in the house. Now, salvation is the gate. Salvation is the gate. Salvation is the gate. It's just like, you know, when you ring the bell, it is like Holy Spirit, you know, pricking your heart. And when you pray the prayer of salvation, it's like, you know, you are opening, you are ringing that bell for the door to be open to you. Once the, wind, the gate is open to you, you enter into the territory. The same thing with salvation. Salvation is not the message. The gospel of salvation that we have been preached, that is being preached in our churches, and that, you know, everybody is preaching. 98% of the church today is preaching the gospel of salvation, not the gospel of the kingdom. So what happens is, like, for example, if you open my, the gate of my, or the gates of my, of my company here, you will still need to walk like, one, like 100 meters or 50 meters before you get to the house. So the gate itself is not the house, but the gate will allow you to get to the house. So once the gate is open, it welcomes you into the territory of my house. The same thing with God. Once the, you, know, you, you open your heart to salvation, you are welcomed into the kingdom of God. You are ushered into the kingdom of heaven. So you, as soon as you receive salvation, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you repent of your sin, you receive him as your Lord and Savior. You are trans, you are transmitted or transported from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You are brought from the kingdom of evil, from the kingdom of Satan, into the kingdom of God. So once you get saved, you are already in the kingdom of God. You know, but people don't tell us that. People don't teach us that our salvation has brought us into the kingdom of God. You know what people teach in churches today? People teach that once we get saved, that you still need to keep on getting saved every day. That is the kind of thing that we don't say it like that. But we say, we need to fight for your, what do you say? Fight, uh, uh, you know, there is a scripture that says that with, with uh, fear and trembling, we are, you know, completing our salvation. We are perfecting our salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. That is true. With fear and trembling, we are perfecting our salvation, moving with God. But what that means is that with fear and trembling, we are pursuing God on a daily basis. With fear and trembling, we are you no know, seeking to please God on a daily basis. With fear and trembling, we are just we are justifying our salvation. With fear and trembling, we are living according to the way we are supposed to live. But that doesn't mean that we are not saved yet. That no, it, it doesn't. Uh, it, no, sorry. They don't say we are not saved yet. They, that doesn't mean that we are not in heaven yet. That doesn't mean we are not in the kingdom of God yet. But even though we are in the kingdom of God, but we are, we, while we are on the earth, we were saved for a purpose. That is what we mean. With fear and trembling, we are pursuing that purpose while we are on the earth. But our spirit, we are already in the kingdom of God. We are already in the kingdom of God. Walking out your salvation doesn't mean that you have to make, do something to get saved. Or to make sure that your, your salvation is sure. 
No, nothing you do will ever make your salvation to be better than the salvation you got in the very first day. The very salva the salvation you got, it is total, it is absolute. But you can lose it if you turn your back on God, if you walk away from God. So, perfecting, uh, 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 you know, whatever, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling is, is, is not saying that you need to do something to make your salvation better. It's just saying, keep on walking with God. You know, that walk with fear and trembling is, with fear and trembling, walk with God. Strive to keep God, to, to, to know God more. Work out the purpose for which salvation has come to your life. Uh, uh, you know, fulfill God's agenda for your life. Fulfill God's agenda. But what I'm about to say is that once you got saved, listen to this. This is a very profound statement. The, the gospel of salvation is saying once you got saved, that you still, no, they, they want to keep you saved. They want to keep you, you know, so that you go to heaven. You know, the gospel of salvation, people who preach the gospel of salvation say, okay, now that you are saved, now we need to work on you. You need to keep on working so that you get to heaven. That is the, that is the thing I want to correct. You don't need to do anything to get to heaven. If you are saved, you are already in heaven. You don't need to keep on working on your salvation so that you will make it to heaven. No, if you are saved, you are already in heaven. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the light. So that is what the kingdom of salvation does, uh, says. But because it doesn't tell you that you are already saved. It means you are already in heaven. You, you are already seated in the right hand of the Father. The Bible says we are seated in the right hand of the Father. Ephesians 2, 2 says we are seated in the right hand of the Father. Uh, Ephesians uh, 2, 6, you know, we are seated in the right hand of the Father. Once we get saved. Colossians 1, 13 and 14, you are translated from the kingdom of darkness. You are already in the kingdom of God right now. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? If you know that you are already in the kingdom of God, that you are already a citizen of the kingdom of God, that you are already in heaven, your reality, you are going to be associating yourself more with God. You are not going to be associating yourself more with the earth. You are not going to be associating more with struggling. If they tell you that you need to work out your salvation again, it's that like you are not really saved or you are not saved to the end. So your focus will be on working out your salvation, like make, make you no, know, your, your focus will come from grace to work. You are going to try to work out in physical work. I mean, and the Bible says we are not saved by works. It is not work of our hands, it is not our good work that brought us to salvation. So your focus will not be implementing the will of God, your focus will not be bringing the kingdom here, but your focus will rather be on making sure that you don't fall, on making sure that you don't sin, on making sure that you don't lose your salvation, on making sure that you don't, you know, you get to heaven. That is what the gospel of salvation does. It keeps you on the earth. But in the real sense, in John chapter 3, verse 31, the Bible says that he that comes from above, he is above all. God wants us in real sense to see ourselves in heaven already. God wants us in, the, in real sense to see ourselves at the right hand of the Father. God wishes to see us in Him. He said that in that day you will know that I am in you and you are already in me. Even though we are on the earth, but in the spirit realm, your spirit man, you are a spirit. It, we are not bodies. Because you are a spirit, your spirit is already in God. God is already in you. You are already in God. And you are already seated in the right hand of the Father if you are a child of God. If you are a real child of God, your focus now must move from trying to do every, struggle every day, you know, with all the problems of the world and the problem of, you know, yourself, you are, you know, you know, not to sin, not to fall, not to, you know, not to lose heaven, not to lose salvation, uh, you, know, to, you know, I must work on my salvation. I must, it, it, your life becomes petty, petty, smallish. You know, you know, you'll be engulfed with yourself. You'll be, if you are following that gospel of salvation, you'll be living, you know, caring that, oh, let me watch, let me try, let me go to church so that I don't lose, oh, let me do this. Let me, it will be, your life will be about you. But in the real sense, we are saved so that we, our life will not be about us anymore. So that our life will be about him. 
the reason why the kingdom of God was put into you is so that you will now begin to live to focus on discovering that kingdom more, on getting to know that kingdom, on unveiling that kingdom that is in you, so that your focus and your whole life will be on the kingdom. Is it and so that you will discover the king of that kingdom, you will discover his characteristics, his character, you will discover how to be like him, you want to reflect him, you will discover him in yourself. You will discover who he is to you, who he is in you, and then you will begin to live to be like him, to begin to reveal him. So that is what your life is supposed to be about, to be committed to bringing that kingdom from your heart, from your soul, from your spirit into the world, into revealing the kingdom of God, his image that is in you, his likeness that is in you. That should be what your life is supposed to be about after you, are, you get saved. To get to know God more, so that God will be known to you, so that God will be revealed in you and to you, and then you, you are supposed to uh, uh, dedicate your life to making God revealed through you, to the kingdom of God to be released through you. But if you are living by the king, by the gospel of salvation. You know, you, your focus is all on yourself. Oh, how I'm supposed to please God today. How I'm supposed to not please God today. How I'm supposed not to fall today. How I'm not to sing today. You are, you are not coming from above. And you are not behaving as if you are above all. You are not coming with superiority mindset. You are not coming in the name of God to subdue the world. Your focus is not to come to rule for God. To manifest God. But you are, your focus is how to make it. You will be struggling just to make it. You will just be thinking, oh, so I hope I will make it somehow. I, I will, um, you are working every day not to promote the kingdom of God, not to seek the advancement of the kingdom of God, but how to make it, which means that your life becomes a life all about you. So you become the center of your life. You become the centrality of your life. Whereas we have been, Jesus was, say, was, was killed and he, he, he rose from the dead so that we will not live ourselves again. The gospel, is, the, the, the gospel was not preached to us so that we will live for ourselves. The gospel was preached to us. The kingdom was preached to us so that we, our life will be about the kingdom. So that our life will now be about God. About God's desires, not about our desires anymore. But when you begin, when the, the way the gospel of, the, of, of salvation is preached is this. We Focus on the man. Every at all the attention is about you and on you. Okay, don't do this, do this, don't do this. And that is why Galatians said, Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? You are saved by grace. You are saved by faith. Who has now bewitched you to now be, you know, observing things that you do this or you don't do this, you do this and you don't do this. Don't let people bring you to that level of downward living, of earthly living. Go, let your living be upward. Let your living be from above, not from beneath. You are not supposed to be living from earth to heaven, trying to live with our strength and energy from the earth to please God who is in heaven. No, we are supposed to see ourselves as if we are in heaven and coming from above to rule and reign on the earth. That is what it's supposed to be about. Now, let me tell you something. One of the purposes of Jesus' death, one of the uh, purpose of G G God, Jesus going to the cross to die for us, and the purpose of salvation, listen to this, the purpose of salvation, the elementary, the basic purpose of salvation is that when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord, and when I confess my sins, I am supposed to deny myself. I am supposed to remove my I, myself, my I, from my heart. The salvation means to dethrone yourself from the throne of your life. Salvation means I am no more the Lord of my life. Salvation means I am no more going to be living for myself. Salvation means from today that I've confessed my sin, I was in charge of my life before, I was the ruler of my life before, I was the Lord of my life before, I was the commander of my life before, I was the one who was the sole commander, I was in charge of my life before. But now that I've confessed my, I've confessed my sin, I bow before you and I receive you to come now to become the Lord of my life, to become not just my Savior, but my Lord. So what happens at salvation is you are supposed to remove the ego that was ruling your life, the selfishness that was ruling your life, the you that was the Lord of your life. You are removing yourself from the throne and instead of yourself, you are putting and throning Jesus to become the Lord of your life. You are enthroning God to become the master of your life. So you are removing the I. 
You, it is your life is not supposed to be all about you anymore. Life is not supposed to be all around you anymore. So if, especially people who did it, because there's a lot of things that I've said yesterday. If you did not listen to yesterday's message, again, I want to beg you. Do everything you can to go and share it, go and copy it, go and look for yesterday's message from morning and evening. Morning message and evening message. Do everything you can to find those messages. It's called Understanding the Gospel of the Kingdom. Go and look for it there on my, on my Facebook right now. Go look for them, copy them for yourself, part one and part two. If you don't get that message, you will not be able to get this one. So you might be having antagonism right now because you did not listen to those ones or those messages of yesterday. But life is supposed is not supposed to be about you. It's supposed to be about the kingdom of God. One major thing that salvation is supposed to do for you is to remove you from the throne so that you don't live for yourself again. So that the person you are now living for is the one who died for you. It's, you are supposed to be seeking the, the face of God the purpose of the kingdom of God. And when I talk about the kingdom, I mean the king and his dominion. That means you are seeking to please the king. You are seeking to know the king. You are pleasing, I mean, you are seeking to be like him. You are seeking to emulate him, to imitate him, to follow after him. You are seeking to you know, duplicate his life. You are seeking to please him, to carry out his hard desires. So the, there are two things, the king and his dominion. So you are not just seeking to know the king, which is building personal relationship with him, to know him through studying his word, through praying, through seeking his face. You are getting to know him. You are making his image to become part of you. But that is just one aspect of the kingdom. That is your relationship with the king. But when you get to know him, the purpose is not just for you to sit down there and be saying more, more, oh yes, Lord, more, Lord, I'm feeling good, ooh, uh, I'm feeling the anointing, I'm feeling the uh, goosebumps. No, it's not about go uh, goosebumps anymore. It's supposed to be, you know, the king is two, two part, two compound words. The king that you are getting to know through your relationship with him and the advancement of his kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek you first to know the king. And seek ye first to advance the advancement of his kingdom. Because he said, of the increase of his kingdom there shall be no end. You are left here on earth. Not to be living for yourself and be thinking, oh, I hope I don't sin today. Oh, I hope I don't fail today. Oh, I hope I make heaven. Oh, I hope I'm, I'm in living in fear. Oh, I go to church. Like I'm doing this so that I don't live. No, no, it's not supposed to be about you anymore. Life is no longer supposed to be about you. If you are busy serving God, if you are getting busy for him, if you are busy building relationship with him, if you are busy seeking his face, if you are busy seeking to the advancement of his kingdom, you will not need to be bothered about, oh, am I sinning now? Oh, am I not sinning now? Oh, who is dressing like this? Or oh, who is coming to church? Who is not coming? Who is not? You are not going to be doing the, doing the mundane things of the earth. You are not going to put yourself to that level. You are supposed to, you are supposed to be coming from above. Everything you are thinking about is about him, how to please him, how to discover him, how to advance his kingdom, how to spread his kingdom, how to make his word go, grow, and take over the world. That will be your foundation. That will be your source. That will be your you know, passion. That will be your priority. That will be the whole thing you want to know. You will be making him your, your first and the last. You will be making him your passion, your whole life. That is what it means to seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But the way the, the, we have been preached to today, the gospel of salvation, the way it's been preached is that, let me listen to this now very closely. We preach to, you know, we make, through our preachings, we make the man the center of his life. First of all, we preach to him that he needs to repent. He needs to get born again. When they are just coming to the church, we preach to them, yo, you have to repent of your sin. Okay, which is good. Receive Jesus into your heart. We do that. But because we want to keep people in the four walls of the church, we want these people to keep on coming. We begin to tell them more, not about the kingdom, but we now begin to tell them more about themselves. So we are telling them, okay, now you are saved. God has saved you. Now God wants to heal you. So we begin to tell him about what God wants to heal you. So, okay, let's say God wants to heal him, which is true. But you see, God is, Jesus didn't pre pre preach healing that God wants to heal. God, Jesus just does that as the consequences of the kingdom message. 
Jesus healed as an outflow, overflow of the kingdom. Jesus healed because he was bringing the kingdom. Healing is just supposed to be elementary. Things that are supposed to follow us. Healing is just supposed to be manifestation of the kingdom. The, 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 the natural benefit of the kingdom. But he was not preaching healing that, okay, now we are going to heal you. and that. So, because when we are telling somebody that God is going to heal him, 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 he now begins to think that God is there just for him. God is there just to serve him. That he is the center, is the center of, uni of his universe. And he is just thinking, now what else can I get? Now I got salvation. But if, even when we are preaching salvation, we should let people know that he is supposed to give his life for God so that he will be living for God to advance the kingdom of God. You know, you know, it's supposed to be about God, about his kingdom again. It's about knowing God and advancing his kingdom. That is what salvation is supposed to be about, the way we preach it. But we will preach salvation, when we preach salvation that God wants to bless you, God wants to do this, God wants, people become egocentric. People come to God just to get something from God. That way they begin to use God. So they see God as Father Christmas. They, they see God as Santa Claus. They see God as just somebody they could take from. They are not seeing God as somebody who died for their sin and who saved them, brought them to the kingdom for his purpose so that he could use them for, to, for his glory to accomplish his task and the expansion of his kingdom. They don't see themselves as an instrument in God's hand to be used to expand his kingdom. And the only time we begin to tell them to do that is when we want to make them to pastors, when we want to make, you know, start another church or start our, 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 uh, our branches. Then we begin to tell them to begin to go to full-time ministry. But in, initially, we, be, we tell people, okay, for God wants to do this for you, then God wants to heal you. After that, then God wants to bless you. So it's about him. And when you preach that kind of gospel, which is this, the focus of the gospel of salvation, is about the man. Because we don't want him to go away. Because we want him to keep on coming. Because we want him, our church to keep on being filled with people. So we, we are now being driven to appease man instead of appeasing God. We are now being driven our preachings to focus on man instead of focusing on God. So the problem with, you know, with gospel of salvation is it is a, it is. A individual focus. It is person focus instead of God focus. Even though God died for man, God loves man, but God still comes first before man. We love God first and then love man second. But the, 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 the focus of, and centrality of Christianity is to be God. God first. And from my relationship with God, from my love to God, I extend that love to man. I extend that my relationship to man. The, the outflow of my relationship with God. But when we make man to be the center of our, of our preaching that God wants to do this for you or God wants to do that for you. And that is the beginning. We first of all tell them God wants to do, bless you. God wants to heal you. God wants, then later on, if we say that, okay, they have, they have been healed or they have been blessed and now we still want them to keep their so we come with deliverance. Oh, God wants to deliver you. Then maybe you come and remember what has happened in your past, in your parents' family, in your, in your relatives, or go and go to your past. Then why did we need salvation? But you have already told him that God has already saved him. If God has already saved him, and now you, because we want to keep him in church, because we want to keep him to keep on coming back, that he still needs help. It to keep on making him dependent on us. That is anti... Yeah. That is counterproductive. That is counterproductive. We are making them to be dependent on the church, on us, to keep on coming. But that way, we are not equipping them. Because they will just be parasites. And they will just be dependent. And, but if we go preach you know, in, in the kingdom into them and make them to realize that the kingdom of God is already in them. The king of kings is already in them. The fullness of God is already in them. And if the fullness of God is in them, they just need to discover him. They need to discover him. They need to know him. Once they discover God, they will not need for anybody to begin to call for their deliverance every month or every day. They will not be focused on themselves that, oh, I need this, I need that. Then when you finish doing the healing, the blessing, the folk, then we begin to tell them, okay, God wants to give you car. God wants to give you prosperity. God, we want to keep on giving, introducing new things that will benefit man. We want to keep on introducing new things that will keep them coming, that will make them to be excited and keep on because we are more interested in gathering crowd. We are more interested in get, making people to keep on coming. Instead of us to let them know the reason why God brought you to the church 
and to the, to, to the church is for you to be trained for your promised land. It's for you to be trained to go and take over a territory for God. It's for you to be trained to go and take over your, your promised land. Not just to be a pastor, not just to be a preacher, but you have a calling. We, the church is supposed to be, the, we are supposed to be telling these people that once you come here, you are here because God wants to help you discover who you are. He wants to help you discover why he created you. He wants you to help you discover your passion. That's why he brought you to this church and you will not be in this church forever. You, you are not here to just be solving your problem alone. No, God has he saved you for a purpose. You are now supposed to be trained. Once you are now a son in God, you are supposed to be trained in your promised land as well and go and take that promised land back for God. That is why you are here. So the church, but unfortunately, the gospel of salvation focuses on building the church. We want to build the church, and because we want to build the church, we have a, an interest in this. We have, uh, we have what do you call it? In, uh, we, yeah, there is an interest. We have interest that the church will keep on growing. The church will keep on having budget. It will keep on having money. We want people to keep on bringing money. We want more people to come and to remain in the church so that we, we keep on doing our own thing. But we are not thinking as you know, as, you know uh, about the purposes of God. We are not putting God's priority first. We are not putting first the, the passion of God, the intention of God. We are not putting first the desires of God. And His desire is that that thy kingdom come and for that kingdom to come in his men in his all of us in his all these people that he's saving as a matter of fact he's saving them so that they will become carriers of the kingdom he brought them out of egypt out of their egypt of sin out of their egypt of sorrow egypt of problem he brought them out of egypt so that he might bring them into their promised land and the midwife, the church is supposed to be the midwife that is supposed to help them to come out of Egypt to go into their promised land. What should they do in their promised land? They are supposed to bring the kingdom of God there, the rules of God there. To, they are supposed to teach people in that promised land to observe what Jesus has taught them. They are supposed to make sure that that uh, you know, promised land of that reflects the kingdom of God. That people over there, that that place is, you know, is covered with the knowledge of the Lord and the, the rules and the, the virtues of the kingdom of God are operating in that promised land. That is why every one of us is saved. Not just to go to heaven. We, you know, we are already in heaven once we get saved. Our spirit is already in heaven. Our spirit mind is already in heaven. But our body is here with our spirit as well. We, it, it's here for us to fulfill purpose. For us to be occupied before until it comes. For us to get ready for us to be busy engaging the earth so that the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. So that the earth will be reclaimed back to the Lord. So that the earth will be, you know, will, will be, will be, you know, that was lost in the Garden of Eden will come back, will be retaken, will be reclaimed back to God. And that is what it's all about. You know, you know, it is not about the gospel of salvation. This is just the beginning, you know. I'm going to continue this message of the gospel of salvation versus the gospel of the kingdom in the evening but before then i want you to know that the problem with the gospel of salvation is that it focuses on the man it focuses on his needs it focuses on it then you know after even meeting his needs we begin to now find, find different churches use different tactics to find out where how we could keep them coming to church then we begin to tell them no you know you are not dressing the way you are supposed to dress even though we are not supposed to dress that process i understand that but that is supposed to come from person's relationship with God, from his personal relationship with God. So we begin to say, okay, you have seen here, or don't look here, don't do that. Uh, we begin to, you know, use holiness to manipulate people, your holiness to make, to drive them to church again. We try, want to try to make them holy. But in the real sense, you cannot make people holy. It is only God that can make us holy. It is only His blood that can make us holy. It is only you, your own heart. It is not what people do outside that decide means their holiness or their righteousness it is what comes from the heart of men that defies them it is not what they wear it is not what they drink it is not how they look it's not their hairstyle it is not their body it is not what comes from the earth the, from the outside that the force it is about what is happening in their heart so but the churches, the way we try to put holiness from outside upon people. And what are, what, what are we trying to do that way? We want to keep them coming. We want them to have fear. To have fear and we, we are holding people through fear. But that is not what the kingdom of God is supposed to be about. The kingdom of God is supposed to be about freedom. Freedom for you to know God. 
freedom for you to discover God for yourself and freedom for you to serve him, to discover your calling and to pursue that calling, to serve him with all your energy, with all your strength. And, and you know, God has a way of correcting all of us. God has a way of, you know, getting rid of sin. But you see, people we have issues people we have issues people we have sin people who fall people who, all of us have issues there is no human being that is without sin if you are without sin you are not here on the earth you are supposed to be in heaven because if you are as long as you are in the body as long as you are in, in on, the, on the earth you will have issues with sin but if you love the only commandment is love if you really love god Real love for God, you see, we, you know, we not want you to sin. If you really love God, you don't want to sin. If you really love God, you want to seek after God. If you really love God, you want to please Him. If you really love God, you want to, you know, do His will. So that is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be talking to people about building relationship with God more than we are talking, bragging them in the head and controlling them about sins. We are making people to be too much sin conscious. When you make people to be too much sin conscious, they begin to do that sin. They begin to live more in sin. But instead of making people to be sin conscious, we are supposed to be making people to be God conscious, to be a relationship with God conscious, to be more conscious of God, of their relationships with Him, of kingdom conscious, of their, 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 their calling to advance His kingdom, of their calling to promote the kingdom. That is what we are supposed to be teaching more to people. But because we want them to keep on coming, we use fear, we use manipulation, we use the Deliverance, we use generational cause, we use all kind of things. That is the problem of the present church today. It is called the gospel of salvation. Now, what is the main difference between the gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom? I, it is the, the gospel of salvation is focused on the man. Why the gospel of the kingdom is so focused on God and his kingdom, the, the knowledge of God and the advancement of the kingdom of God. I told you the story yesterday, and I've been telling the story everywhere, that I went to Nigeria we, we, for five weeks with one of my pastors, who is a, 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 a European pastor. And we were there going to, from one church to the other, and we, I was trying to show them the big move of God in Nigeria and all that. After a few weeks of going through all these churches, the man said, I will remain in the, in the hotel. I don't want to go anymore. Why? He said, because these churches, they are not, they have been coming, I've been in this country for four or five weeks. Nobody is talking to me about God. Nobody is talking about God. What are they talking about? They are just talking about, oh God, what God can do for you. What we can get from God. So we are just using God. So we, people are going to church and pastors are preaching you know, messages in such a way that it's about you. So, the, you know, we are going to church to worship ourselves. We are going to church, church not to seek him and his kingdom. We are going to church to seek ourselves. We are going to church to seek our own will. We are going to church to seek our own good, as to seek our blessing, to seek our, you know, our, the gifts from God, to seek just things from God. But Bible says we should seek God. We should seek his kingdom. So this man said, I'm not going to go to church anymore in Nigeria. He said, because if this is the God kind of gospel you have preached to us in Europe, then nobody would have been in the church. We wouldn't have come to that church. But when you preach to us to know God, every church, every time you are in church, you are supposed to be knowing, discovering more about God. To know God himself, how to please him, how to reveal him, how to be like him, how to carry his image, how to please, know his desires, his will, and how to go and be efficient in carrying out his will and purpose, how to advance his kingdom. Those are the things that we're supposed to be preaching in churches. But what do we hear people preach in church? Oh, God will bless you today. Oh, God will bring a breakthrough today. Oh, God will heal you today. Oh, so we are using God as a, as a, as a babala, that's my language, as a black priest, a black magic person. You know, because that's what you do when you go to the black magic. You go to black magic to get something to bless you, to improve your life. So, so you pay for it, or you, that's why we give our tithe. We pay for it so that the man of God, the priest, and the, the black magic man will make so, you have your own good. So the purpose, that is paganism. The purpose of paganism is for my own good. I'm going to the priest for my own good. I'm going to God to get what I need. That is paganism. The difference between paganism and Christianity is that you use God to get what you need. You, you are going to God. You are worshiping God so that in exchange, God will give you something good. God will give you what you need. God will meet your need. 
So you, that is idol worshipping. That is what idol worshipping is all about. Idol worshipping is when you worship idol so that in return the idol will give you something. You are worshipping the, 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 the pagan, uh, paganism is you are seeking God, you know, so that God will improve. That is why Jesus said, don't do like that. Jesus said, don't be like the pagans. Don't be like the Gentiles. They are the ones who seek after what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, and all that. And they are repeating. They are always going to repeat many words. He said, don't let your, don't let be like, don't be like that. He said, seek ye the kingdom, because the pagan, this is what the pagans seek after. This is what the Gentiles seek after. The Gentiles seek after what they could get from God. But you should seek after God and his kingdom. But your And your father who is in heaven knows what your needs are. He will make sure that all those other things follow you. We are not pagans. We are not Gentiles. When we go to God to seek after what to eat, when we go to God to get healing, miracle and all that, we are behaving like Gentiles. We are, you know, you know making ourselves the, the Lord of our lives. We are on the throne. We are seeking what we could get from God. We are using God for our own benefit. It is we, we are worshipping ourselves. We are not worshipping God that way. And when you do that, you become a Gentile. You become idol worshipper. That's why Genesis, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 6 says, don't be like the Gentiles who go to seek after those things. It is the Gentiles that seek after things. We should not be seeking after things. We should be seeking after God. We should be seeking after God. We should be seeking after His will. We should be seeking after His desires. We should be seeking after pleasing Him. We should be seeking after advancing His kingdom. We should not be seeking after things. When you seek after things, you are a Gentile. We don't don't go to church to look for things. We go to church to look for God. We go to church to please God. We go to church to fulfill His our desires, to make Him happy, to love Him more. That is the, what the gospel of the, of king, the kingdom is. But gospel of salvation you know, focuses your attention on you, your needs, your problem, your this, your that. That is what the gospel of salvation is. And that is why we must change that. We must correct that. And tonight, I'm going to continue about that topic because there are other things, there are other you know, manifestations and tendencies of the gospel of salvation that I must talk about. But let me hear what your thoughts are. I want you to write what you are thinking about this message. I want you to write what you are receiving from this message and what you think God is talking to you, you know, right now. You know, write your comments and, you know, like, yes, like I said, I come back every morning at this time, 9 o'clock Ukraine, 9.30 Ukraine time, that's 7.30 Nigerian time, a.m., 7.30 British time, a.m., and around 2, 2, 2.30 a.m. Uh, American time, Eastern time. And to, tonight, every evening, I come back 7 p.m. British time, 7 p.m. Nigerian time, and 2 p.m. Uh, yeah, American time, Eastern time. Now, now. Uh, let me see what you all are writing. Please write what you are receiving from this message, what you think God is talking to you about this particular message, and, uh, and what your decisions are going to be. I need to know what, what is happening to you, what changes are taking place in you, and what you plan to do with those things you are hearing. Tiger said, Pastor, you are just pouring out my heart. I don't know how else I can make people understand this. Thank God that at least someone is talking about it at last. Uh, Paul says, Africa needs this message desperately. Oluwatoyin says, uh, help us, Lord. Things need to radically change. Ikeshuku says, today's church is all about using God to achieve and fulfill selfish goals rather than relating with God to perform his purpose on the earth. Yes, it's supposed to be about relationship, relating with God to, to perform his purpose on earth, not using God to get our needs. Ogunrombi say, Luke 12, 31 say, but seek ye the kingdom of God and all things shall be added unto you. Yes. And that's in Matthew as well. Matthew 6, 30, 33. Kike says, Wow, I just caught a revelation. The church is supposed to be like the midwife to ensure the delivery of the purpose, destiny of a child of God. Yes. That is what the church is supposed to be. Uh, Louisa says, Louis, yeah, every time you are in God, you must learn how to please and do His will in, in the kingdom. We use God to get what we need. We have turned church into paganism. Lord have mercy on us. 
Paul, Paul says, Pastor Sunday, this is the message we need now in the African churches as it is the turn of the uh, African church to evangelize the lost. Ikechuku says, Matthew 15, 14 says, if the blind leads the blind, both of them will surely fall into a ditch. Sad indeed. Uh, Toyin says, the gospel is not about us. Tiger says, this is why in the New Testament, the emphasis is on the Holy Spirit. When you are led by the Holy Spirit, you don't need the laws for the Spirit of God leads you away from sin and leads you to God. That is so true. Esther says, wow, in the, instead of living from earth to heaven, we are meant to function from heaven to earth. That is right, but that is not what people have been taught. The gospel of salvation, it doesn't teach that. It's only the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, Godwin Ibekwe said, the, the, there's error in the body of Christ. The gospel has been twisted. It must be corrected. This is the cure message of the king and his dominion. Yes. Obina said, then he brought us out from there that he might bring us in to give us the land of which he is for to our fathers. Yes. Uh, Louisa says, God has a way of correcting us. We have issues. If you, if we have issues, if you really love God, we won't sin. We make people too much sin conscious. We need to make them God conscious. Yes. Mkem says, that's so true, sir. They make people so much conscious of sin and unconsciously people act it out. That's true. Esther says, salvation is meant to take man away from being the main focus in life in the place of God and make God and his kingdom the focus. That's so true.